uh, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to chat with you. Yeah, looking forward to talking about the UCI program. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into some of the questions. Uh, I guess first, you know, I'd love to just start off, get a little information from you about how the program got started. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm Mark Deppey. I direct the UCI eSports program. Uh, we started considering a program uh, in the summer of 2015. Um, I was finishing up my MBA program, had worked at UCI for five years, looking for something new. And um, I stumbled upon a few interesting facts. Uh, one was um, our university had been ranked the number one school for gamers by a publication called College Magazine. Um, they talked about our elite competitive League of Legends team, our great community. Uh, I was aware we had this great, great game design program on campus. Um, I was doing a, uh, a paper on Blizzard Entertainment at the time, so I was aware of how big esports was becoming. And then I also saw that uh, uh, Kurt Melcher's program at RMU had just launched. And so there was another school offering scholarships for esports. And so as someone with experience in higher education and business, um, I just kind of started exploring the opportunity and to see what the appetite for campus leaders was to allow us to do something like this. Um, and so we built a business plan. Uh, we eventually uh, found the financial support through some great sponsors like I Buy Power and others. Um, and then we got campus approval, built our space up, uh, and opened in the fall of 2016. And so there's a lot of hand holding from our student leaders. Um, Jesse Wang, who is the president of the Gamer Gaming Association at the time, uh, Kathy Chung, who is our assistant director right now, um, some of the great students that had built up the college esports scene at UCI had, were really fundamental. But um, yeah, every time we uh, had to meet a challenge, either to demonstrate the value or the interest on campus or the financial viability, um, every time we were able to come back with really compelling data to convince campus leaders to let us do it. And obviously everything worked out and, and we just wrapped up our fourth school year of operation, which makes us one of the the ancient programs in college esports. Yeah, four years ancient. Um, yeah, well, and you're one of the most well-known kind of popular programs in the scene too, so it obviously worked. Um, so I'd love to, yeah, hear a little bit about the kind of cons competitive side of the program. I think a lot of folks who are watching this are going to be, you know, interested in playing esports on a varsity or a competitive level. So if you want to talk a little bit about that, you know, kind of teams you offer, levels they play at, etc. Love to hear about that. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, we, we offer currently scholarships for three different games, um, League of Legends, Overwatch, and Super Smash Ultimate. We try to play and compete in the games that are, are most important to campus, that we think we have talent in, that we have student interested in. And so uh, those three games really resonate uh, with UCI. Those are, there's a lot more interest on campus for other major games. Counter-Strike's been one. Uh, Valorant, we have an elite <laughs> club Valorant team right now, but we can't support everybody. Um, and, be and because we do want to support them pretty deeply. So uh, each of our team has a great coaching staff. All of our coaches have coached in the professional scene before. Um, we have a team psychologist, exercise physiologist. And so uh, we really do want to create a well-supported infrastructure for students. Uh, we actually also have a student uh, or player support coordinator who's helping with uh, academics and classes, if you need tutoring, if you need help scheduling your classes, changing majors, whatever that is. Um, we know that students have a ton of stress. Uh, playing esports is really stressful, team conflict and uh, the grind of solo queue. Um, and so we, we put a lot of energy into uh, helping students navigate that and live healthy lives so that they can compete the, hard, the, the best that they can when they do compete. Uh, our teams have been elite in terms of competitiveness. Um, all three of our teams have competed in a national championship match. We won the 2018 League of Legends Championship. Uh, that same year, we were runners-up in Overwatch. Um, in the last two years, our Smash Ultimate team has made the finals uh, in Smash Ultimate and then Smash 4 the year before that. So um, we, do, we do host super elite teams that uh, find a way to – yeah, live up to the hype and overcome adversity. So um, we're certainly uh, a program that has been able to find the talent and support them so that they can be at a high level. Nice. Yeah, you guys have a really impressive record. Um, so on the subject of resources, I think that's a good segue into maybe you talking a little bit about you know those facilities and what kind of equipment and gear are available to students who want to play esports at UCI. 
Yeah, we, we're really proud of what we provide our players. Um, a lot of it's because the generosity of our great sponsors, specifically folks like I Buy Power and Logitech. Um, so we have a great arena. It's kind of the first on the planet uh, public esports arena that the community is open to. Or it's open to the community. It's open to our scholarship teams so where they play and practice. Uh, so it's four years old. Um, we just refreshed our PCs a year ago. So um, really top end PCs with the latest generation of graphics cards and Intel chips and all that stuff. Uh, and then all our players also have access to Logitech gear. So you have the G Pro mouse, wired, wireless, whatever you want, the nice headsets, the keyboards, um, all those things to, to compete at the highest level. And something we haven't talked a lot about publicly is we are actually just finished construction on a new uh, high performance and research space. So um, we're actually going to move the scholarship and arena, and it will be mostly in our, our new space where the players each have a team room. So League of Legends will have a room where they close the door. Uh, same with Overwatch. Um, we're also going to have a video uh, replay room. We'll have a space for pro teams or visiting teams to boot camp in if they want to come visit. Um, our players will still have access to the arena if they want to play between classes, but um, we've seen that privacy matters. We see that desk space matters to people. We see that uh, you don't want to share a PC with people uh, who are going to change your settings or move your stuff around. Um, and so we're trying to elevate that. But we're living in the world of COVID-19, so it's going to be a very different landscape this year. I don't know how many players are actually going to come to campus. Some might live at home. Um, and so we're going to try to support everyone the best way we can. But uh, when they're on campus, uh, both our students and our community members, they have access to top of the top of the line facilities, and we continue to try to elevate what we're doing and meeting the needs of everyone involved. Nice. So there's a lot of esports programs that are springing up all around the map. Um, I'm curious to get your take on, you know, what's something that really differentiates your program? What makes it unique and special? One thing I think that makes us really unique is just, well, what our broad focus. So we do compete. We put a lot of effort into it, but we also support academics and research. We're also engaging with the community and make the world a better place. Uh, we're also creating entertainment. We're streaming and broadcasting our matches. We're also helping people with career development. So those are our five pillars uh, that we do. And I would say one thing, the one thing I'm most proud of that's very different for, with our program than almost every other program out there is that we really commit to the student experience. And so by that, I mean, you're going to graduate. If you come to UCI and you want to play on our teams, you, you can do that, but we're going to push you to graduate. We have a near 100% graduation rate. Um, if, it doesn't matter if you play professionally, if you just came out of high school, if you value a degree, a high value degree, um, there's no varsity uh, esports university that's more highly ranked than UCI and no one's going to put more energy into helping you graduate with the degree you want than UCI is. And so we're really proud that People don't just come and go. They're not fleeting. They're not one. They don't just come for a year and then figure out what they're going to do next. We're really trying to find people who want that college degree that value uh, what what UCI, what a university can give you, and we're going to set you up for success long term, and not just not just make you grind twelve hours twelve hours of solo queue to to see how high we compete this one year. We're really trying to invest in people long term and help them wherever they want to go. Nice. So I guess last question, um, you know, speaking to the folks in the audience who are thinking about applying, who are interested in the program, what is one thing that maybe, you know, as the director, you want them to know? Um, could have to do with anything, but just your take on that. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about what we're looking for in people. Like I, I would say the number one factor, or two, let's say two factors. One is talent. You, you need to be good at the game you're playing. Um, we, we, there's there's no substitute for a, a star player who understands the game, understands how to break it. He understands the economics, or she understands the economics of it. The other thing that's equally or equally let's say equally important is motivation. We want self motivated people. If we have to convince you to play the game, or if we have to convince you to go to class, um, it's not going to be a great experience for anybody. Um, if you look at the best players uh, across any sport, they're the ones that work the hardest, that have this internal drive. And if you want to be the best, if you want to have an ex, uh, an awesome college uh, experience, if you want to be social, if you want to uh, have four or five amazing years while competing and attending a great university, we're a great spot for you. But if you're not, like we're probably not a good fit for you. Um, if you, if you need to be dragged out of bed, if you need to be told to practice, if you if you're not watching, if you're not a student of the game, um, then we're, we're maybe not a good fit for you. So. 
Uh, I just want to share like uh, motivation is so critical for what we're doing. And we're going to push people really hard. We're going to ask a lot of them. We're going to ask you to manage your time. We're going to ask you to work out. We're going to ask you to eat well. We're going to ask you to go to bed on time. All of those are going to contribute to a successful esports career and a, su a successful career after esports. And so that's what I really want to tell people is that we want you to be talented. We want you to be motivated. And we can work with anybody if you have those two things. Perfect. Well, Mark, thank you so much for talking to me today. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Alex. Take care.